Hello, I'm Matt. And I'm Kara. And welcome to Making YouTube Yours. This is an introductory class that's designed for people who want to learn about basic YouTube features beyond just watching videos. During this session, we will be talking about searching, subscribing, saving, organizing, and creating on YouTube. Well, it sounds great. So let's get started talking about searching. Okay. Did you know that there are over 500 hours of video uploaded to YouTube every hour? No, I had no idea there was that much content. Yep. And that's a lot of content to search through. <laughs> So Kara, how can you search through and find exactly what you want with all that content being out there? That's a great question. Why don't we take a look? Okay. So searching in YouTube is pretty simple. In the search bar, you can search any topic title person that you're looking for. And then we're going to look at how to filter those results. So let's do a quick search for read alouds. And then you'll notice you've got a filter option. So this is great to narrow down uh, what you're looking for. So you might want to filter according to the upload date. So you can choose something anywhere from the last hour to the last year. You might want to search for a type. And I'm going to stick with video. But you can also search someone's channel if you're searching for a person. Uh, a playlist, etc. You can filter by the duration of the video as well as features and you can sort by relevance, upload date, view count, or rating. So you've got a lot of filter options to weed down what you're looking for. And then you can select your videos to build your playlist from there. Let's say you've been searching for videos and discover that many of the videos you like are coming from the same channel. Is there a way to keep that channel somehow so that you don't have to keep looking for new content all the time from them? That's a great question. An easy way to do that would be by subscribing. And to do that, you click the notification bell for the channel. And then that allows you to be notified every time they post new content. Well, cool. Let's see how that works. Okay, so there are a couple ways to subscribe to a channel. So you may have done a search for the channel, or maybe you just came upon the channel when you were doing a search, and you decide that you'd like to subscribe to it. So next to the channel is going to be the red subscribe button, and all you do is click subscribe. You'll notice the little bell popped up next to it, and I can decide how I would like my notifications set. So it defaults to personalized. So you can decide if you want all notifications, which are going to be anytime they post anything. You can leave it on personalized, which is going to filter according to things that you've uh, liked or um, YouTube has noticed that you lean toward. So it's kind of going to give you personalized notifications for videos that they think you might be interested in. Or you can select none and you can turn off those notifications. The other way to subscribe to a channel that um, doesn't always give you a notification option is if you've gone into a video... You'll also notice the subscribe button below the video that you're watching. And sometimes, depending on the content, you may or may not be able to set your notification permissions when it's under a video itself. Um, sometimes you only get those options on the channel itself. So keep that in mind, but those are two ways to subscribe and set your notifications So far, we've been talking about searching videos and subscribing to channels that we find interesting. So now it's time to really start making YouTube yours. Let's talk about different ways that we can save videos so that you don't have to go through the search process to find all your favorites. Oh, absolutely, because that can be very cumbersome with all the content that we mentioned that's already there. So the first thing we'll do is we're going to look at the save to queue option. And we could call this like a temporary playlist because this enables you the opportunity to find videos and kind of put them in a, in a temporary playback list. 
uh, that once you've closed your browser, that list goes away. And that's a very important part to this. So I want to stress that this is a temporary playlist that you're creating while you're in YouTube. So let's check out and see what the Save to Queue looks like. When adding videos to your queue, remember that this is just a temporary list that's only going to be there while you're having this browser tab open. Once you close your browser, then these videos in your queue will go away. There's two simple ways that we can go about putting videos into our queue. I've done a really generic search for EdTech videos, and I've got four of them here that we're going to use to uh, demonstrate this. The first option is I take my cursor, and I put it over this icon right here, and it pops out a little words that say Add to Queue. I simply click on that, and as you can see over on the right side, that has been added to my queue. A second way of doing this is using the three dots over on the right side, clicking on that, and selecting the top option, which is Add to Queue. I'm going to do that with these others, just to have a couple more videos in the queue. Again, I'm going to use the one where I hover over the video thumbnail. And then I will go over and click on the three dots and add this fourth video there. So now I've got four videos queued up that are ready for me to watch. I can see those, the list over here, you can see it says I have one through four. And if I click on the little up arrow or carrot, and it'll expand that list and I can see all four of those videos there. If I click this, it's going to expand this window and show me the videos in more of a full screen size. But also if I've decided that, you know what, I really want to hold on to these. I don't want to have to search for them again once I close my browser tab. Um, I can go here to the save button and I can actually move this over to my watch later section, which is something that Kara talked about earlier. Or I can create a brand new playlist and put these videos inside of that. So the adding to queue feature is a really quick way of just uh, marking videos to watch in that same time frame that you're having your browser open. And then you can decide after watching those if those are videos you want to retain or if you want to move on from them. Next, let's talk about Watch Later. Watch Later is a pre-created playlist that you will see on the left side navigation section of your YouTube screen. As you select Watch Later for videos, they will appear in that category. As you may have guessed, you can access these videos for viewing at a later time. So here's how that works. So let's take a look at Watch Later. There's a few ways to add content to your Watch Later list. And the first way is if you have found a channel or a series of videos that you know that you'd like to add to your Watch Later, right on the video, if you hover over it, there's a little clock. And if you click the clock, it's going to automatically add that video to your watch later. So that's one way to do it. The other way to do to select watch later is in the video itself, if you're there already watching it and you started or whatever, something comes up and you'd like to save it to your watch later, there is an option under the video to save. And if you click that, you'll see that you can add it to watch later. Go ahead and exit out. And then to find those videos later, once you have some time, you're just gonna come to your YouTube menu and you'll notice you have a tab entitled watch later. I'm gonna select that, and you'll notice that all of those videos that I added are there. So once you've created this, so one thing is I can shuffle my playlist so I get surprised the order that I'm gonna watch these videos. The other menu next door is going to allow you to add more videos to your watch later, or you can remove um, the videos that you've already watched. So it'll go through and um, just take out the ones that you've already looked at. Another option is 
there are three dots alongside the video. And if you are adding a bunch of videos to your watch later and you decide that you'd like to add them to individual playlist, from this menu over here, you can select to add it to your queue or add it to a new playlist that you've created to organize those videos. Lastly, let's look at add to playlist. Adding videos to a playlist allows you to categorize them, rearrange them, and even share them with others. Playlists can be given a specific name and be created before or after selecting videos to be placed there. So let's see how playlists work. So now let's talk about how we create playlists. I'm actually going to start this by picking up where we left off with saving to queue. As you notice on the right side of the screen, I still have those four videos in my queue because I did not close my browser tab. We're going to use those to end up creating our first playlist for this example. Now first I want you to look over on the left side and notice that there is no mention of any playlists right now for me because I've not created any yet. So if you don't see the word playlist or anything on the left side, um, that's because you haven't done this before either. So don't fret. This is going to end up, once we create our first one, under the watch later um, section over on the left side. So looking back on the right, I have my queue of four videos that we did earlier. And now we're going to use this save button that's at the top of that list of the videos in the queue. And when I click on this, I have an option to move those over to watch later, which we've talked about before. Or I have the option to now create a new playlist that is specific to me, and I get to give it a name instead of it being just called watch later. So we're going to click on the plus sign to create that playlist. And for our purposes, we'll just call it demo. You have some options underneath that about the privacy level for your playlist. Now for now, we're going to only be doing private because we haven't created a channel yet. In order to use public or unlisted playlists, you'll have to have had a channel. But as you can see, this sharing is similar to what you'd see with a Google Doc type of sharing with other people. We're going to keep this private for now and we're going to create that playlist. And as promised over on the left side, you now see the word demo with this uh, icon next to it, which is the playlist icon. And if I click on this, <clears throat> you'll see that I have the four videos that we had used earlier over in the queue, which, which is still there. And I'm going to go ahead and close this out now. Ooh, so if I do that, though, it's going to close that player. And I'm okay with that because I'm, I'm good. I've got those videos here now saved in my playlist. They're not going to go away when I close my browser. Over here, we have a few options. Uh, once I create a channel, I would have an option, again, of sharing that with others or make it searchable. Uh, I have the option to shuffle the play. I have the option to add more videos or add all to a different playlist. I can delete the playlist, and then there's some other settings here that, that you can look at. One of the other ways that I can rearrange these is instead of just shuffling them is to put the cursor over the two lines, which creates a hand, and I can drag and drop these in the order that I like. I think that's important because as you add videos to a playlist, you might discover that there's a better sequence to put those videos in that would make them more make more sense to play them in, in, in that order instead. So that's how you can move the videos around. We also have a pencil here to edit the title. Admittedly, demo is a little lame, but for this purpose, I wanted to have something short. But you could rename this something that was more descriptive or something that better met your needs. And also, I can give it a description so I know more about what, what was I thinking or why did I create this playlist. You may already have that with the title, but in case you need more of a reminder or, or a better description, uh, you can add those things there. The three dots over on the right side, we have similar uh, options to what we saw in other, in other uh, videos with the, with the uh, watch later. Uh, we can save this to a different playlist, and I can add this back to watch later, or I can put this in a new queue because I've already created or I've already eliminated the other queue that I'd had. So this is making playlists. 
And it's, again, a good way to save videos and be able to come back and find them and rearrange them and work them in ways that work best for you and for your students. All right. Each video that you have watched originated from someone's YouTube channel. So now it's time to create your own. Sweet. Yeah. Creating your channel is easy. And having a channel allows you to upload your own videos. And if you're adventurous, you can even go live. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your channel title is customizable. So it allows you to, to be creative and choose a title that best describes what you want to convey. And this channel is associated with your Google account. Right, so it's free. Yes. Nice. So let's explore how to make a channel and use its features. To get started with creating a YouTube channel, we're going to begin at our YouTube homepage. Over on the right top left corner, you'll see a circle with your avatar or with the letter of your Google account. This one is Soida Student, so it has an S there. And we're going to click on that avatar or that letter. And you'll see at the very top, your first option is to create a channel. That channel is going to inherit the name of your Google account. So again, this one is Soida Student, but we can change this and make it something else. Um, for this purpose, we'll just use Demo. And then I'm going to go to Create Channel. Now, once a channel is created, now I have the opportunity to uploading my own videos, creating and sharing other playlists, and having a library of videos that I have um, associated with my account. So if you remember back when we were creating playlists, and at that point, the only option I had was to have a private playlist. However, now that I've created a channel, I have the opportunity to see this under my account and now it's under my YouTube channel so it's not just under my YouTube account but it's on my channel now and I can go to view playlist and now I have the option to make this public and searchable for others to view or I can make this unlisted and just share the URL to people that I want to be able to access this playlist so that's one of the things first off that having the channel enables you to do. So now it's time for us to upload a video. To do this, I'm in my YouTube channel and I would simply go down here to the YouTube uh, upload video and it's going to take me to YouTube Studio and now this is where I'm going to be able to upload these files. And let's say I want to upload one of the videos that I have already on my computer. So I'm going to select Movies. And I'm going to go down to the Soida News. And then Open. And that's going to upload this video. It now looks like this. And this is part of the process of getting from bringing the video from my computer and actually getting it put up onto YouTube. So I can give this a new name if I want to choose to, if I choose to, to change this. And again, give it a description. Right now this video is processing, so this takes a little bit of time. Um, but once it's, it's happened, you'll see a small image of the video over here. And you'll see some thumbnail shots that it takes from my, um, from the video. You'll also notice underneath where the video is processing on the right, a video link that's been created for your video. Just to the right of that link, you can see a square with like a square behind it. And that's where you can copy the video link. And you can actually share that link out with people now, even though the video is still processing. Below that, I have an option to add this to a playlist. So I could add this to my demo playlist. Or I could enter, uh, create a new playlist. And now I have the option, remember, to make this public, private, or unlisted. So we're going to make this one public. And then I'm going to create that playlist. I'm going to select this one, the Demo 2 playlist, to be where this video goes. 
And then I'm going to choose whether I have, I consider this, yes, it's made for kids, or no, it's not made for kids. Now, if I select that it's made for kids, that eliminates any comments, any of the comment sections that, that are usually associated with YouTube videos. But it's going to allow it to be seen on YouTube Kids. Um, if I select no, it's not made for kids, then it does have uh, the option for comments. And unfortunately, sometimes those comments are not child appropriate. So if you're making this for your class or for your kids, uh, you're most likely going to want to leave this on yes. Once the video is processed, we can add subtitles. It's going to give you this notification that before you publish, they're going to check for copyright issues to make sure that you haven't just downloaded and then re-uploaded someone else's video. Okay, lastly then, we've we talked about the public private or unlisted for our playlists but similarly we're going to be able to assign this video with one of these three levels of permission uh, most likely you're going to want to have this saved as public so that your students and other teachers and other students can see your content and then you can also schedule a time for this to be made public later so if you just want to have a private Unli or unlisted screening at first and then you can schedule this to actually be live and be searchable later on then we're going to publish the video again this is po this is processing right now it's going to take a little while but once it's finished processing your video will be available both in the playlist that I assigned it to and then also since I made it public it'll be available to search uh, for anyone to watch. So that's the basics of how to upload a video of your own to YouTube. I hope this session was helpful for you and it gave you some insight and some opportunities to learn about using YouTube beyond just watching videos. By watching this session today, you should have learned about how to search for videos more effectively, learning how to subscribe to channels or receive notifications, learn how to save videos by creating playlists or watching later organizing and rearranging, and then creating your own channel and sharing that with others. So we hope that you are ready to make YouTube yours. Thank you very much. And if you have any questions, you feel free to contact us. I'm Matt at Soida.org. And I'm Kara at Soida.org. All right. And thank you very much.